Hello my soccer universe, with the winter break postponing some of the Austrian fixtures I thought it is high time and I was actually planning already for a while to look at the Eredivisie 14 rounds played and it's my first long form video that I make on the Eredivisie it's just as I said already my schedule has been really crazy I would have loved to do a little bit more because there have actually been quite some storylines that would have warranted actually a sooner video namely how bad Ajax have been how abject the former European champions Ajax have been in this season. Uh, this is probably the biggest story. Although I would argue PSV still being perfect and having gone through almost all the big teams already and still being perfect, that's probably the biggest story. At this moment, it's a foreground conclusion that PSV are the new Dutch champions. I think there's no way stopping them, especially after this past weekend uh, it looks really, really, really good for them. But yeah, as I said, I am loosely following the Eredivisie. I, this will be a video where I just will run through the standings. You will see all the results of the season running through as well. Um, I want to give you my thoughts on the big teams where I think this league might be going. And then we'll talk a teeny bit about some of the results from the past weekend before we wrap it up. So yeah. I said, it, I said it already, if we look uh, at, at the table on the top, it's PSV. 14 games, 14 wins. 50 goals scored, only 6 conceded. It's pretty amazing stuff. At the moment they have a lead of 10 points ahead of their closest rivals, Feyenoord, which they've just beaten. Uh, and maybe we'll get to that uh, towards the end of the, of, of the video. It is pretty amazing stuff. And it's not only, you know, the, probably the token player that they have is uh, Luc de Jong coming back, you know, via Barca and from Spain, who has already been there last la, la, in score scoring goals. But, you know, there's also some young talent in there, like uh, Sabiri and Poscali, the two goal, goal scorers from the last weekend. Bakayoko, of course, is always a great player there. Uh, it's a really well-run team that maybe had the one um, a big blip when they lost uh, to Arsenal uh, in the Champions League. But in the Netherlands, unbeatable at this very, very, very moment. As I said, they have beaten Ajax 5-2 and now they have already beaten, um, they went away to Feyenoord and beat them 2-1 in a game that was actually tactically quite sound, but then they scored two goals, have created more chances to the point by the 65th, 68th, Saivari and uh, Boscali score. The go-ahead has had goals and only laid on Feyenoord. And this was literally, for Feyenoord, the chance to basically get themselves back into a title race that they have not really been in. Um, they get the get away through uh, Raul Jimenez, who has been uh, one of the better or the best goal goals goal, goal in the league, but uh, cannot find an equalizer. So really well deserved uh, win over for PSV. And as I said, at the moment, nine ninety five percent chance that PSV will win the league. It's pretty much a done deal. The uh, Eredivisie has not really been, especially la, la, last season, where it was so tight. We had a feeling that Feyenoord is the, is the best team, but it was not a foregone conclusion. This time it is a pretty much a foregone conclusion. As for Feyenoord, I think they had a little blip at the beginning of the, of the season, but up until recently, um, where, you know, lo lo losing on top PSV, they have been actually racking up the wins. So the gap has, they have been a parallel run through P uh, like PSV. Just maybe a tad less. I tell you, they're still defending Chad Champions at the moment. Uh, arguably, they're still the second best team in the Netherlands. Uh, but it's not quite on PSV's level. Uh, on the other side, has, has we said, you know, we have 41% of the season played. They're 10 points behind. If there would be a collapse of PSV, I think Feyenoord would be right there. But I wouldn't really count on it. I don't, I don't think a PSV will throw this one away. Uh, there's also two more that are probably for the last Champions League spot, which is a playoff spot. And the Dutch have this time two fixed playoffs, um, Champions League spot plus a playoff spot due to the good performances, but also due to the expansion of the Champions League. So those two teams are Z and Twente, uh, who have been really good. I mean, uh, Z, of course, there's Pop 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 Lisa, but also Twente, they have, they have been a really stable, stable team. And those two teams are actually the ones outside of PSV that have been performing overall. Uh, the best when you just look at the mathematical rating. So uh, those four four teams are really the cream of the area division with PSV being like the cherry on top of it. Um, then there are a couple of um, 
teams and the air divisie table is still a little bit on un, un, uneven with some main mechanisms and this was also something you know we had ajax uh relatively uh towards the bottom if not uh in on the bottom of, of the table also always with main mechanisms it was not really a true re reflection but you know in the european playoffs at the moment we have to go ahead eagles that's a little bit of a, a surprise but but they're doing good sparta rotterdam herrenfein Ajax, uh, even Zwolle is, is actually quite high up, but it's a relatively wide one uh, between the go-ahead Eagles and um, Nijmegen who sit in 16th and that's the playoff spot. There's also only 10 points and this goes rel re relatively close, so this is a close league. But of course we have to talk about there, in there are also two of the three biggest underperformers of this season. Uh, one is Utrecht, a team that was actually in the playoff and actually had a really good goal season last time, the time around and get slowly get it going. But at a horrendous start, they were down there with Ajax. Of course, they beat Ajax in a famous 4-3 uh, win. We definitely have to watch the highlights of of, of that one. That uh, could have been a turnaround. It was not quite quite it, but as, as of late, Utrecht are finding form and I see them um, probably slowly climbing the table. And since it's actually really relative that. I think they might as well end up in the European playoffs. As for Ajax, as I said, it was always a little bit deceiving because they had games less. And yes, another thing is that we had two uh, players with uh, medical con condition that where, where play had to be halted because uh, they had a heart attack similar to Ericsson, uh, which kind of pulled things a little bit back. It was less, the, um, I think the only, the only game that really got halted because of uh, stuff being thrown was actually the classic uh, between Ajax and Feyenoord where you know at 3 nil it was abandoned and then was uh, finished a few days later with ended with a 4 nil over Feyenoord which was at the height of the Ajax crisis but yeah um, Ajax at the moment sit in 8th with a game with, with, with a game in hand uh, that they probably will win as, as we'll see which will put them then towards the 5th position I think this is probably the ceiling for them this season um it has been a, a couple of rough years starting and it's well documented and you can find videos out there but i started more, more or less with mark overmars uh being uh fired for sexting totally understandable uh and then you know the whole thing falling apart because he was pulling the the, the, the players there was not really a system we always thought that i actually sophisticated model no it was all mark overmars and fantas are uh, also having health problems uh then they're hiring uh the wrong uh sports uh, sport, uh, sport director who, who also does uh, uh, quite some impropriety there the squad is really uh badly put together and then they hire a coach that is just not an ajax coach at least now with fans Heap. they have a coach that has the ajax dna and for ajax it's not only to win but also to win in style a little bit like barcelona in that case and that definitely doesn't make it easier to 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 do it there but uh they had such a bad start now picks up again they they do get wins although it's mostly against teams that are already in the relegation trouble except for the 4-1 win against herr vein at home i think that was a little bit of a exclamation point um but i think at the very 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 best they make Europa League again, but I really don't, don't see them. Maybe okay, they can focus on the cup, although at the moment, Feyenoord and PSV are by far the better team. So I really would need a miracle for them to make it uh, um, to win that title. Champions League, you can already say goodbye. Uh, there's another uh, team that is, was kind of a big name over the last few se seasons, maybe already la last season, now, which is Vitesse, who is sitting at the moment in last place. It was a team that was threatening in Europe and, and so on. I, as far as I understand, they have serious uh, financial trouble. So that doesn't sit well uh, there uh, as, as, as well. And you can see it can quickly go up. It can quickly go down again. It is really, really damning in a way. I know two seasons ago, I I, I was almost desperately looking for a Vitesse shirt. And at the moment, yeah, they're getting relegated. It is, it's really, really, really bad. Um, of the... Uh, promoted teams, I, I, I actually have to say Momos and uh, do, do go well, Heracles is in the middle. We have Almere actually, that was a team that everyone thought they will uh, not make it far as above the relegation zone, actually a little bit punching over their weight as well. And then, you know, uh, as for re re relegation, Follendam looks really, really bad at, at the moment and Nijmegen is also not looking quite good, but you know, there's also Walbach in, in, in there. It's overall quite interesting 
picture. Um, I, we already talked talk about the big uh, re result between Feyenoord and PSV. I think uh, if you look at the results from the last round uh, here in what they dedicated, um, we see also the 20 got win. Ajax got a, a, actually a vital win, but it's again against Nijmegen, but they needed the breakthrough. They got it and done. Uh, Ajax, I think, start working in, in, in a way. Utrecht also 1-1 one, one against AZ is actually a very credible result. They probably would have deserved uh, on the basis of a, a, good, a good second half a win. And 20 beat the go-ahead Eagles, which we already said are really, really sitting high in the table. Um, I just want to also look not only at the standings, but also at the expected standings. And uh, it pretty much tells us, tells us that I've been telling you that with PSV, fair not at Z. 20 uh, PSV ahead of Feyenoord who are pretty su uh, secure in second place and then the other ones Ajax the ceiling is the fifth spot uh, they had such a bad bad bad, bad start that, that that's really not much more is possible but if Ajax would have a normal season from here on they will also cruise into this fifth, fifth space and probably get the conference league playoffs and we don't know what happens in in in, in the cup uh, then there's a Kuril Cup with Sparta, Guadil, Herrenveen, Utrecht. Ut Utrecht still expected to finish a little bit higher. On the bottom, Almere, Vitesse and Volendam at the moment are going down. Uh, we have a few May make make again game games this week. We have AZ against Nijmegen. Uh, it was one of the games that had to be abandoned uh, due to a medical emer emergency. And the same thing then Valbike against Ajax. I think this this will be finished. I don't think they will be re replayed. But then you will see that Ajax will actually move up in the in, in the table on the weekend. Uh, not really big match. Ajax. I think probably the best one is already the first one between PSV and Herrenveen which is then on Thursday, so the stretch out the round that we have like a whole bunch of, wa of watching, of course, uh, on the 8th, 8th of December, at least in Austria is free. I'm not sure if the, in, the, in the Netherlands is the same case, but you know, they stretch the weekend out to have that. In any case, that was it for me with my thoughts on the Eredivisie so far. As I said, the two biggest stories is the perfect PSV, and this is really a mega story because I there is no other team in Europe that at the moment has such a great form. Um, and then, of course, uh, the train wreck that at least was Ajax, still in a way is Ajax, but maybe they're stabilizing. But um, I'm always afraid at this moment. And, you know, two years, years ago, we, we thought Ajax are a completely shining example. It can go really, really, really fast. And one hopes that they steer into calmer waters because especially European football is something else with Ajax. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line if you want to add anything. This was a very much an outside perspective for me on the Eredivisie. I will talk to you soon about more. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.